Tyler King alongside Evan Cook after one heck of a dramatic end to a two-game homestand. The Fort McMurray Oil Barons come away with a 4-3 win over the Calgary Canucks in a shootout. And Evan, as dramatic as the finish to this one was, I think the theme was really how this game started out. I had the chances in the first period, 9-1 in favor of the Oil Barons. Had some great chances in the start of the second, but a combination of solid goaltending and nothing that I can qualify as anything other than bad luck prevented the mob from scoring on some of their best offensive chance generation of the whole of the whole season yeah it absolutely was i mean the barons had their chances in this one that one's pretty clear something kind of nice to see from them too is they got some of that chemistry going that they've been missing lately uh, they had lines that they could roll out there and you know everybody was contributing offensively at different points in the game so that was a nice thing to see from the oil barons you know it's been a little bit of a while since we've seen that from them uh, you know obviously would have been nice for them to not go to the shootouts, and I'm sure they would have liked to wrap it up in 60 minutes, but big win all the same. Once the Barons finally did get some pucks going into the back of the net, like usual when you get out of a slump, it's those what they like to call garbage goals or greasy goals from the front of the net. But frankly, Evan, those two goals in the second period off the sticks of Adam Durkee and Austin Holmes, they don't get started unless you see some really nifty puck handling skills from a second-year defenseman in Brett McNeil. Yeah, you know, it's absolutely true. And uh, McNeil, who we've talked about before, really in a role this year where he has to step up and lead this def defense core here in his second year. Uh, you know, he had some, uh, you're right, great plays with the puck, good hard shots that got on the net, produced those rebounds, and he had his forwards, you know, crash the net and, and pick up some loose pucks. So really strong play for McNeil, that's for sure. So we head to the shootout, depending on Brett Luchuk, <laughs> and the number two goaltender for the Oil Barons makes, uh, well, one shot goes wide, and then two of probably the biggest saves of the entire season and Evan uh, not just the great save by Luchuk on the final shot of that shootout but the ovation from a crowd of more than 1600 here at the Casman Center uh, was a real big relief after some struggles in the games leading up to it yeah it absolutely was and, and you're right the place went nuts it, it was a really cool atmosphere for him to be a part of it you know a shout out to later in overtime you know his team goes down shorthanded in the last minute and a half two minutes of that overtime period and he came up with some big saves to even push this game to a shootout that's for sure now we have the Barons heading on the road and one of the tougher trips they have scheduled this year, Evan, heading out for a Tuesday-Wednesday series against Grand Prairie and Whitecourt, then down southwest of Edmonton for Saturday and Sunday games against Drayton Valley with two games off in the middle of that. Doesn't make sense to come all the way back up to Fort McMurray and head all the way back down, so they're staying on the road for one of the longest stretches outside of playoffs in quite some time. It, you know, to use a, a little bit of a generic saying, it's going to be very interesting to see how the Barons respond to that. It, it absolutely is, and it's kind of a funny time for the Barons because, you know, coupled with that kind of funny road trip and the dates that they have, you know, when you take a real, you know, frank look at the standings, we're playing the bottom three teams in the North Division standings, and it's going uh, up against this time of year when you're looking to make a push up the standings for playoff position, home ice position in the first round. Uh, it's a big time of year for the Barons and the uh, what better way to uh, kick off, you know, a real nice long road trip and they'll get comfortable with each other off the ice, that's for sure, but uh, we'll see uh, the results on it because they'll be looking for some big ones. And finally, there's going to be lots of scoreboard watching coming up, Evan, as you look around the Oil Barons in the North Standing. Still the same key players, but on that Saturday night after they beat the Canucks in a shootout, uh, you end up in a situation where there isn't a lot of good news otherwise. Lloyd Minster comes away with a big win over Whitecourt. Somehow Bonneville ends up with a shootout win over Brooks. So the Barons are still in a very tight battle with the Pontiacs. Lloyd Minster has still got a clear advantage for second place in the North. But all it comes down to is winning your games in hand. The Barons are still in that type of position. If they win games in hand, they got a great shot at taking second place. Yeah, they really do. And it's almost too bad, you know, the schedule couldn't align that there wasn't another game with the Pontiacs here at the end of the month because, you know, boy, that team's been rocking lately. And we saw a couple weeks ago with the Barons taking care of them in a shootout here you know but you're right to those two Lloyd Minster games just becoming more important and more important when these games keep happening you know on nights like tonight where both teams win and that point differential is the same but the games remaining just keeps getting lower and lower well we'll head on the road and the oil brands will take on the Grand Prairie Storm Tuesday night a 730 puck drop at the newly named Revolution Place in GP puck drop at 730 you can hear all the action on the voice of the oil brands chaos 91 1 at 715 and don't forget Barons back at home for two very big games against the Lloyd Minster Bobcats in the final two days of February the 27th and the 28th puck drop for both of those at eight o'clock.